Dua in Malaysia writes, and he says, I th I'm guessing it's a he, would you enlighten me what is an electric electrical crossover and an, an acoustical crossover in a speaker. So what's the difference between an electronic crossover and an acoustic crossover? I found this on the specifications of the Tannoy Westminster, but not on the other speakers. Others just specify the crossover. So basically what Dua is asking is what is the difference between an electronic crossover and a passive crossover? Now most speakers use passive crossovers. And that is, there's a couple of good reasons for that. First off, loudspeakers use power. So generally speaking, unless we have some very sensitive loudspeaker that's like, you know, 100 dB or something, where we don't need a whole lot of power, we only need 5, 10 watts. Um, but Generally, uh, loudspeakers use hundreds of watts. And so we need a crossover to separate the tweeter and the mid-range and the woofer so that their frequencies don't overlap. We need a crossover that handles power because we're putting power into it, okay? And that requires passive components that handle power. So we would have capacitors we would, and, and capacitors act as high pass filters. So we can put a lot of power through a capacitor. And when we do that, it's going to roll off the bottom end. So we use capacitors on tweeters. We also, if we have a mid range, want to do the same thing. We want to use a capacitor to roll off the bottom end, make a high pass filter, so only highs pass. But we also need to roll off the top end. And for that, we need an inductor. An inductor is a big coil of wire. Now, in a small electronic circuit, which I'll explain in a second, we don't need to have big coils of wire because we're not handling power. So here, for example, uh, is a big coil of wire on a big steel bobbin. Now, something like this could be used inside of a loudspeaker because this can handle, somebody's after me, this can handle a lot of power. See how thick the wire, I mean, this is like, oh, thick wire, heavy steel, this can handle a few hundred watts, and that's what you need inside of a speaker. An electronic crossover, on the other hand, won't handle power. An electronic crossover is like a preamplifier with bass and treble controls. It'll take voltage in, voltage out, usually times one, so one volt in, you get one volt out, but it electronically divides the frequencies, high pass, low pass, mid band, mid band where you have a high pass and a low pass, so for a mid range. And so we put voltage in, we get voltage out, but we still need to deliver power to a speaker. How do we do that? Well, in an electronic crossover, we use that to feed separate power amplifiers that go directly into the drivers of the speaker. So the power amplifiers drive, let's say we'll have three power amplifiers, one for the tweeter, one for the mid-range, and another for the woofer. Each of those three power amplifiers are fed from an output from the electronic crossover, which is separating the frequencies into those three separate bands. And that's how the power is handled in the speaker, where in a normal speaker, a passive speaker, one power amplifier has all ranges of music and it goes into passive components like capacitors and inductors and resistors that can handle all the power of the amplifier and yet still divide the frequencies. Okay? Hope that helps. Thanks for checking in and watching these videos. Bye.